I'm Zoe Rose. I work for a local ISP, and I do networking as a job, but it's also kind of my hobby. I'm nerdy like that. Uh, my favorite thing in the entire world is my two ferrets, parsnip and radish. It's true. Right there. Um, I got you. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about configuration management. Uh, it's so hmm, change management is the administrative process of tracking changes on in your environment. Configuration management is the administration administrative process of tracking configuration changes. Um, so, hmm, problem. Uh, my theoretical situation is a small network which is not centrally managed. Uh, therefore, once a device is configured and deployed, I have no idea what actually is going on with it. Uh, and potentially, if nothing breaks or nothing acts weird, I really wouldn't know if a change was made. My solution was creating a monitoring service that tracks changes using syslog and MySQL, and then displays those changes to a web site. Um, overall, I'm just going to go through what configuration management is, uh, explain the reasoning behind why I want to track those changes, um, show a real life situation why it would be useful, um, typical deployments, the benefit of what mine does, uh, and then what I originally wanted to do, what it ended up turning out to be. I'll show you my scripts and then I'll have some questions. I got this from uh, Wikipedia, so that's better definition than I could have given. You want to read it? So basically, it is the process of tracking and monitoring changes made to all devices, which is smaller than that. OK, cool. So why configuration management? Uh, why would I want to monitor my configuration changes when I am clearly so epic and clearly never make mistakes like ever? Uh, well, for one, uh, you potentially are not the only person making those changes. Uh, mistakes can be made quite easily from being tired or new or maybe you don't quite understand the configurations you're implementing and you can make mistakes just because you don't know. Um, also, the 5 billion devices, as noted before, this is a small network, that's an exaggeration, but sometimes when you're configuring device after device after device, it can feel like a billion devices. Um, shit happens, self-explanatory. And also, we are in fact mortal. We can get hit by buses, and sometimes somebody else needs to take over uh, once you've left. Security in, and inf information security is, and the offense is basically, it's all about monitoring all the things. <coughs> Alrighty. So this is my one example from real life that maybe would make sense to uh, why monitoring configuration changes would be important. Uh, if somebody breaks into the firmware and takes access to your router and makes changes for you, it, my script would notify you that there's these changes being made and you can notice that the start and run don't match or this yesterday's configuration doesn't match today's configuration, that sort of thing. And it would be useful because you could catch it a lot faster. Okay, so things to remember. This is just a guideline. Uh, I started this project to actually inspire other people uh, with configuration management. Uh, it's for a small network uh, and not a large network. Large networks would have something called ITIL, which is information, IT Information Library, which is a collection of best practices for um, IT. Uh, it would include incident management, change management, and all of that fun stuff. Uh, for small companies, this isn't really possible just because we don't have a full-time security manager or we don't have the people to be able to actually implement it properly. Different types of deployment are centrally managed and per device. Uh, centrally managed would be you have a central location, you can push out configurations to um, all of the devices. It's a little bit easier, a lot less administrative work. Um, and it's easier to monitor because if something's not working, you can just push out a new configuration. Uh, per, device is the per device is the environment I'm talking about. 
the theory of what I'm talking about still is valid to the centrally managed, but would be implemented quite differently. Uh, for the port per device, uh, you have a device setup. A uh, technician deploys that device, and then you access it remotely when something is not working. Something is nope. <laughs> so, what is the benefit? Um, the benefit of my script specifically is uh, I have backups, kind of. I actually download the configurations and compare them, and then store the start configurations from each day. So, if something messes up, like you implement a change and it messes up, you can quickly restore it to the previous version. Uh, accountability because, in a way, uh, because I actually made multiple logins, so the system would have its own login, the technician would have its own login, and it would be a little bit more, it would assist in being more accountable because it tells you who made those changes on the network. Uh, quicker response, so uh, we all remember um, a certain company's data breach back in 2013. Uh, they, it was quite very big, uh, and it could have been minimized because they actually noticed something wrong, and the people monitoring it told the people in charge, you know, this, this is not working, like this is not right. And then they did nothing. And uh, so, yeah, although this is super cool and tracking the changes is awesome, you actually have to take the next step and do something about it, <laughs> otherwise it's pretty much invalid. Base configurations, again, as mentioned, I'm doing per device, so one super sweet thing is I have a bunch of configurations that have to be set for all of them. Therefore, uh, I can have a base, I can put that in, and then just make the customized changes per device. Theory of how my shit works. Uh, what I wanted to do <laughs> is I wanted to have routers and switches, laptop, Python, SNMP, and SCP. Nice, clean, pretty. Uh, turns out, I don't know anybody that uses SNMP besides using GET. Besides using GET, they don't, I didn't know anyone that did it with uh, triggers. There's so many. I know, and I asked like a million people. But whatever, that's fine. You're all jerks. <laughs> so, uh, I ended up changing um, reality of how my shit works and really adorable ferrets. Uh, so I use Cisco routers, Cisco switches, um, a bunch of laptop, blah, blah, blah. I use Python, HTML, blah, blah, blah. All cool stuff. Um, and then I actually got a script from GitHub that um, actually downloaded the configs all for me, so I didn't even have to do that. It was awesome. <laughs> Future changes, please don't judge me, um, but <laughs> turns out um, I am not taking the first initial step of security, and I actually have a CSV file with my devices and their clear text passwords, <laughs> and that's how it logs into them. I'm sorry. Um, future changes would be, I would change that. Uh, the other thing I would like to do is, I wrote a uh, script for ping and latency. I just didn't implement it anywhere. I didn't have time. Lastly, when I make a change on the network, I go int lo0, and then I go IP address, blah, blah, blah. Right now, it reads it in as two separate lines, doesn't connect them at all. It's just one shows up after the other one. Uh, in the future, I would like it to be the command, they have a parent command of the interface, and then the IP address would be the child command, so they're a little bit linked, because right now, you can add an IP address to a router and uh, don't know what interface it is. Alrighty, scriptage. So, um, <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, I don't know if you've ever heard, but uh, Cisco has this built-in thing called, um, what is it even called? Basically, it sends the syslog updates to whatever you want it to send to. So right now I have it set to send to this IP address of the Ethernet on my laptop server thing. And uh, it's really cool, because uh, it sets, sends the IP address, uh, the host name, all of that fun stuff, supposed to say here somewhere. I think it's the logging shit that I just passed. Cool. I'm prepared for this. Uh, and you, one thing you have to do is you set the size, blah, 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 and then you have to actually set the host you want to send it to. I was having an issue where I couldn't figure out why the heck it wasn't sending, and it's because I didn't tell it to send it anywhere. Uh, and as a note, when I started, I was doing it on my MacBook, and then I moved to a Linux, and then it all died again, and that's because they in a Mac, it sends it to the system.log. On Linux, it, send it sends it to its own syslog log. Turns out. All right, now we'll go back to this one. Let's see. 
So I actually have a cron job that runs this every minute. Uh, it reads in using, um, if you can see there, it actually reads in line by line the syslog um, log. And uh, using uh, red, regex, it matches the timestamp date, or timestamp, host name, user, and the command that was actually run. Uh, and then it does its thingy and checks if it's in the database, and if it is not in the database, then inserts it. Um, I have it printing the command just so I can verify it actually ran, but uh, you don't have to do that. Um, also, remember to actually commit it, because I wasn't, and it took me a long time to figure that out. <laughs> Stupid jerk. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, other weird freaking thing I noticed is because every time it sends those syslog updates, it actually commits a line that's like not enable or something, and it fills your database with a million of those. So I um, check if it's that, and if it is, I ignore it. Again, please ignore this super awesome bad practice of reading in an SV, SCV. Uh, yeah, shut up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> another interesting thing is getting the date and yesterday's date in Python. Not easy. Not easy at all. You would think it would be, but no, it's not. Um, so I create the folders I want to store my shit in. Um, and then I use a really cool thing I got off of GitHub. It's called iOS config fetch. It downloads the configs for me using SSL and, or SSH. And it's awesome and I love it. Uh, and I didn't have to do anything. I just have to pass the username, password, and that sort of stuff. Um, and then I uh, try for the start because sometimes people don't save the running config to start. I don't know why because they're stupid, but it happens. Uh, and so I try it just in case it errors. Um, and then I save the configurations. Uh, I have a temp folder for the run and then a specific dated folder for the startup config. Another thing I learned, uh, diff is really stupid to use for this. Uh, <laughs> so um, again, I read in a CSV file, also stupid, and I compare, well, I make a folder, and then I compare the start and run configs to see if they're different, um, and then I compare yesterday's startup config to today's startup config. Theoretically, this is really cool. Um, right now, it's actually just storing it in a file showing the changes. Uh, what I wanted to do was set triggers, but turns out, um, you don't want to do that because diff compares it as if it is a file, uh, not as if it's logically, it's not, it doesn't logically compare it. So like if you change an IP address, you think, oh, it's just that line. But no, if it changes anything, it shifts the entire file, and then it just sends you the entire config. <laughs> and that was annoying as hell. So I'm not doing that anymore. OK, so I'm actually going to show you my super cool web page, and hopefully it actually works. Yay, it does. This is exciting. This is what I was worried about. So, yes. Uh, so this is my output. I am not a web developer, developer, but I made it black and green, so it's Hexer, right? Um, so basically what happens is uh, the script to parse out the stuff runs every minute on a cron job. This runs every, or that runs every minute. This web page actually refreshes every 30 seconds. Uh, I set those just because, but uh, it displays the last 30 or last 20 changes um, made on the network. And as you can see, it has the timestamp, the host name, rainbows, sunshine, lollipops, the user uh, console would be the script. Yes, maybe I don't remember. Um, and then Zoe was just I me. Um, <laughs> and as you notice, actually, the issue I had is if you set a, a loopback and then you set the IP address, they don't connect at all, which was annoying. But that's okay. Um, na, 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 na. How much time do I? I've only used twenty minutes. Yes. Okay. Cool. There we go. Questions. Sure. What? Well, I. Hmm. <coughs> More I wanted to get the overall stuff done so that I had something to actually talk about. And then I actually want to dive in and more and add SNMP because <laughs> this looks annoying. But yes, that's that's why I didn't have anyone that could help me apparently. What? What would you do differently next time? Um 
I would probably not use this <laughs> comma separated file. <laughs> Maybe. Um, the other thing I think I would do would be. Oh. <laughs> uh, yes, per. Yes. I did use a comma separated file with plain text passwords. <laughs> Got a Twitter question. Thank you. Do you know what makes it even better? I actually thank him later in my uh, thing. <laughs> uh, yes, I did. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, other differences would be I would probably, I would try and implement it on more than just Cisco devices. Right now I just have Cisco because that's what I'm comfortable with. Uh, but uh, it was neat. It was neat learning all the things that are already built in that I had no idea existed. So that was kind of cool. Any other questions? Questions, questions. I have a cool quote. Uh, this is valid unless, somebody said unless you're Starbucks, but, yeah. <laughs> and then I have a thank you slide. That's my favorite parsnip. Uh, my friend, Golub Ninja, he helped me with, like, writing the script and helped me focus. And then Seb's awesome. And then down there, that's who asked me if I actually use that. He's running PasswordsCon <laughs> in December. <laughs> I hope he doesn't hate me. Uh, yeah, so there's, that's Radish. Um, that's how you can contact me, ask me more questions, don't make fun of me, and yeah. <laughs>